what would be an accepted minimum workup in your eyes from a pediatrician's point of view that would meet the criteria that seems to be out there right now? Well, as of this month, the American Heart Association came out with recommendations based on a council of individuals who studied this particular problem. And basically, this is what the recommendations are. First of all, a very careful family history, specifically looking for incidences of sudden death in young people in the family, to a history uh, of whether or not this child has potential symptoms that may be related to cardiac disease. Which would be? Syncope, that is, unexplained fainting. Um, possibly exercise-induced chest pain. Um, a physical examination. Clearly, uh, children that have pathologic murmurs, that would be something that would be important to look at. The real controversy lies around, first of all, whether every child should have a baseline electrocardiogram prior to going on these medications. And for the first time, a body such as the American Heart Association has come out with a recommendation that every child before being placed on these particular medications do have a baseline electrocardiogram. They are not recommending that every child seen by a pediatrician be referred to a pediatric cardiologist so that one can just get a baseline electrocardiogram if it is interpreted as normal and the child can go on medication. And then they basically stratify the kinds of abnormalities or variants of normal that one may see that would then lead the pediatrician to potentially getting a cardiac consultation. What conditions would make the pediatrician, from his history and from whatever he's done, say that this is a red flag, we have great concern about using these medications? I think the key is the sudden death issue. And that would, for example, uh, lead one to suspect hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. Oh, wait, wait a minute. You're using a medical term. What is that term for a lady? Well, hypertrophic cardiomyopathy is the most common cause of sudden death in young individuals who have cardiac disease. It's a thickened heart muscle, specifically on the left side of the heart, which can go unrecognized and which can re relate to incidences of syncope or sudden death. It can be a hereditary disease and may be somewhat difficult to ascertain if a child has it, but a good family history followed by an electrocardiogram and potentially further examination by a cardiologist would point to that as a diagnosis. The other diagnosis which one gets concerned about is what's called a prolonged QT syndrome. This is again a genetically based disease there's an incidence of sudden death in families that have this. How common is this? It's, it's rare. I mean, it's, it's a rare disease, but potentially overwhelming for a family because it can't cause sudden death. And there does is, it run in families? It does run in families. Uh, there are genetic tests to determine it. Uh, it does. It does lead to catastrophic events, and there is great concern in individuals that have this particular syndrome that placing that child on these medications may to some extent facilitate a, a catastrophic event. 